would like to do this on Saturday, September 23rd, and Sunday the 24th. The Historical Society would like to do their annual um, boardwalk art show on August 20th. And lastly, the Asbury Park Annual Beach Volleyball Tournament would be held uh, simply on August 5th from 8 to 5 p.m., not the August 6th date. Also, the mayor asked me to give a brief overview of recreation, so I'd just like to take a couple minutes and do that. Uh, with regards to our summer camp program, we began this past Monday on June 26th, and we will run through August the 4th. Um, as in past years, we have two locations, Bradley Primary and Thurgood Marshall. As of this date, we have 210 kids enrolled, and that number will go up when summer school begins on July 5th. So we've already surpassed the number of kids that we've had in summer camp last year, so we're very excited about that. Uh, today was their first trip. Thurgood Marshall went to Funplex. Uh, Bradley went to iPlay. I'm also very excited because this year we're going to be working with more businesses in Asbury Park. Uh, the Showroom, Pink Elephant, Silver Ball Museum, Hot Sand, Cookman Creamery, uh, Eddie Confetti's, um, the Water Spray Park. So we're very excited about that as well. Uh, we were able to hire 11 youth Asbury Park youth to work with the summer program. And speaking of working, um, we have 25 Asbury Park youth that are employed at Six Flags. And of course the issue is getting the kids to and from uh, Six Flags. So the Recreation Department is providing transportation for these youth uh, to go to and from work. And part of that money comes from the Rodeo for Recreation, so we're very fortunate that we had those funds to assist. Uh, the children who are working, they do pay a uh, fee, a small fee per week, uh, because nothing in this world is free and our children have to learn and you have to pay for certain things. So they pay a small fee to get to and from work each week. And then when those funds come in, that goes into the Recreation Trust account. Other programs we're offering include the Summer Basketball League, swim lessons at the Boys and Girls Club, a uh, soccer program. The Lake House is giving us a free week-long uh, summer, um, summer music program for Asbury Park kids. And Summertime Surf is also doing a week-long surf camp for our kids, and that's free as well. The Water Park is open next to the middle school. It will be open uh, through uh, Labor Day, maybe longer. The weather's hot. And that's just a brief synopsis of where we are this summer so far. Great job. Nice. Great job. And thank you, Jesse, and thank you, Eileen, for chairing that committee. And just because some towns have a lapse between school and when recreation starts, it's great that we start right away. So mm -hmm. that's why I asked it to be announced today. And great job, especially getting 25 kids jobs at Great Adventure and getting the transportation back and forth where they can make money for school. So, mm -hmm. And that's the second year we're doing this. So Fantastic. I'm excited about that. One thing, <coughs> you, see, you mentioned a Pop Warner. Pop Warner? Yes. No. Sign up. Uh, yes, oh yes, with the uh, special events application. Please yes. let those people know, all right, that we're trying to help them. But if they keep on tagging without getting permission, then we're going to stop helping them. Okay. Or you'd like for me to do it? Or no, no, it, it. it's no problem, Mr. Kendall. I can all do right, that. Then. We do Thank have you. guidelines for tagging, so I'll remind them of what they are because they are aware. Well, I'm sure they just the, forgot. Don't they have to get permission first? Well, somebody, they have to get a permit. Somebody mm -hmm. and what's, they're tagging what's, what's every tagging? weekend. What's tagging is similar to what the fire department do with the buckets Donated. stand on it. Um, oh, yeah, they've been out in the street. Asbury, Asbury Avenue, Avenue Asbury and Central, Central Avenue, and First <laughs> Avenue. That's what they do illegally. I will talk to them about those guidelines, Mr. Thank Kendall. You. Thank you. If you need me to be with you, I will. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alicia. Review of this evening's agenda items. Thank you, Ms. Burke. Uh, resolution. 209 is a place to place liquor transfer for John Mack. Uh, 210 is. I, I don't. I'm sorry, explain it to me. It's place to place. It's just for their cafe license so they can uh, serve and you know, use the cafe area. By law, you have to license the place, every inch of the place that you serve at. Okay. And when you expand the size of an existing license premises, the process is what they call a place to place transfer of the license in order to expand the size of the Resolution P10 is the local finance board application. Uh, the state asked us to make some changes that this was review of the last one that was approved, um, the last meeting. Resolution 211 and 212 is refunds uh, to two properties. The addresses are in the resolution. 
Except that we're moving Jamie Nadell up from alternate to um, a permanent member. That's it, right? Uh, 2019 is liquor license renewals. Um, I believe 2020 is going to be pulled from the agenda. Yes, uh, council will be taking, considering this and taking action at a future meeting with regard to 2020, which is the renewal of the uh, liquor license for the I'm sorry, it's I cracked the letter. Oh, yeah, it's 19. My typo, yeah. by City Council. Um, I have nothing at this time. Um, just one item today. Michael had a job fair, and the job fair for the Renaissance project that's going to be on Springwood Avenue. There are a number of construction opportunities, so there will be uh, applications available in the lobby 
of the city hall for subcontractors and also employment opportunities. And it, the employment opportunities are available to anyone within Monmouth County, but of course, Asbury Park residents get preference. So please come and pick up applications. Uh, these jobs are going to start within a near time frame, so it's an opportunity to have a job that's going to last for at least 18 months. <coughs> No comment at this time. Uh, I have a couple of things. So this weekend, the Environment and Shade Tree Commission and the volunteers of Wesley Lake, okay, uh, work together to put up um, in um, the word A, the letter A and P at the entrance to the footbridge into Ocean Grove in the shape. You know, we use plantings, and then when you, I'm not describing. When you look at it, it, it's AP, and then you walk into Ocean Grove with rose, rose bushes, right? I, and I was there planting, so I, sh I should be describing this better than I am. Anyway, it looks fantastic, so I want to thank um, those two organizations. They did a great job. Um, and those of you who didn't hear, the Garden State Film Festival has come, come back to us, so that's really, really great news. And we are doing an initiative with the Downtown Merchants and the Chamber to provide free parking only in the Bangs Ave lot on the first Saturdays of July, August, and September from one to five. Um, they're doing kind of a sidewalk sale where they're putting, I think, some of their merchandise out on the sidewalk. And uh, anyway, the idea is to kind of revitalize um, the whole first Saturday. So from one to five in the Bangs Ave lot, there'll be free parking um, as a downtown business initiative to <coughs> you know, bring more people into town. That's it. That's it? Let me start off with the bad, and I'll go to the good. Just, uh, I know we're going to get a lot of complaints about Steiner Place. Steiner Place is being paid by the city. Uh, we asked New Jersey Transit, could we pave their area? The city would pay for it. We've been asking this for close to a year. New Jersey Transit has constantly said no. Today they put up sign saying no parking so we went from like say maybe 20 parking spots back there that affect a lot of businesses being residential. residential we might have been better off not paving the street for sakes i mean if it was the worst street in asbury park we paved it and new jersey transit would have given one iota and i was told i couldn't criticize them too much because we need them down the road but so i just want to let the public know if you have any criticism about steiner place the city offered to pay it for free. Would it cost New Jersey Transit zero? If we were going back to the way it was with the bumpers there, parking the way it was, they said absolutely not. So if you have complaints, I would please ask you send them to New Jersey Transit, not us. Uh, the good, as Amy said, the film festival, and then I want to thank our staff for doing such a great job in writing a grant for the New Jersey Transportation Alternatives Program for $237,000 that we got for Main Street improvements. And in our zone, there were 77 applicants and only 27 received money. So our staff did a fantastic job. I want to thank the staff. Uh, that's all I have. Matters by the city manager. Thank you. Uh, matters by the city attorney. We can recess until 7 p.m. for the regular meeting. Ms. Floyd, I see you from Do roll call. Councilmember Chapman? Here. Councilmember Clayton? Here. Councilmember Kendall? Present. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Here. Mayor Moore? Here. Would everybody please rise for a silent prayer, a moment of reflection, please? Flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following manner. The annual notice was forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the Coast, and the Star Ledger on January 3rd, 2017, and posted on a bulletin board the same day. 
All notices are on file with the city clerk. Have a motion to open up the uh, council meeting to the public, please. Move it. Second. Anybody who is coming up to the mic, please state your name and address for the record, please. And each member of the public has three minutes to speak. Felicia Simmons, Sewell Avenue, Asbury Park. Um, I'm coming here um, dismayed about um, last week's um, master plan rollout, um, initial um, final copy master plan. Um, as you might have been informed on that very night was the high school graduation. The town was concerned and I was concerned at that night is either see my nephews graduate high school or come to the master plan meeting. This is a whole city um, that has concerns and um, wants to be represented. And when we do things like have such a important act done on a time in which most of the city, especially Asbury natives, will not attend. Half this, most of the city was on that beach that night. I'm concerned, I'm concerned about in this meeting, um, no real plan or development for affordable housing was um, put to the floor or put in the plan. As most people know, that plan is what's gonna happen in the city for the next 10 years. And what I feel is that we've been ridding out of the city. We've been ridding out the city and it's um, at this time, through all I know, it's, it's been done on purpose. We're one of the rare cities who've had money over the last decade to build and to do something about our homeless population, and we have not. We have not addressed um, the artists who are being pushed out. We are not addressing the culture that's being stomped out of our city. Um, what makes us the coolest city in the country um, is being pushed out and dispersed throughout the country. It is offensive to the people who live here. Um, it's not a black white thing, it is a power thing. And I feel that in some ways we are being corrupted. Like Lord Acton said, power corrupts absolutely. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. And it's being corrupted. We live in a city in the last few years where I've seen splits and fights in a culture that's never had splits and fights. We've all, Asbury Park has always been an open, embracing culture. And I've seen splits and divides cut into this culture here, this home and heart that has never been here before. We've had people come from all around as Asbury Park was one of the original haven cities. And we've always been a haven for everyone. And now I feel that we are, that's being pushed out for different cultures, for different things, for different people have arrived. Well, you've never arrived until everybody has arrived. The persecuted has now become part of the persecutors. They're seeing rips and tears, and it's offensive, and it's not my home. That's it. Thank you. So I'm just gonna respond to that, not that Felicia has to respond. I was at the meeting, Felicia, and it was, a, a, and we, we taped it for APTV, so to make sure that people had an opportunity to watch it, and it was full of, full of information regarding inclusionary zoning, affordable housing and live art workspace so i'm not sure if you had a chance to watch it on aptv yet you you did see it so then you and i attended two different meetings because i saw that repeatedly throughout the entire presentation I just want to let you know there's two other opportunities for um, input into the master plan. So at the next two planning board sessions, is that it hasn't been scheduled yet? Okay, so there's going to be two other sessions. 
where the, we will encourage the public to come out and provide input um, once again before before a final draft is is finished. Sure. So we'll we'll have them scheduled, and it'll be posted on the website. I don't know how you find out your information. Okay, go to the website. Keep checking on the website. Thank Tracy. you. Uh, Tracy Rogers, Springwood Avenue. Um, one, I wanted to know about the uh, software program that was that was supposed to be unleashed that talked about uh, the quality of performance of uh, the city's activities. And I thought we were supposed to have a rollout by June. Also, uh, during the conversation in the last meeting, uh, the city manager said that Edmonds zeroed out any allocations of RTA money. I want to know how many accounting systems do we have, and if he can explain, you know, what each accounting system does and how we get each of that information over. That's it. The performance measurement software started in May. It's on the website. It's, there's a page for it. And each department has its own subsection within the department, um, <laughs> except for public works, which we've had a little bit trouble with the uh, uh, work order system. Um, just some issues just with street names. Um, but every department is up and we are still beta testing some of the other departments and ad avenues that we're adding. So we, we started rolling out some of them in April. Every one of us has, has been up since the beginning of May. Um, and we have one financial software, it's Edmonds. So wh when I go to the website, is it has one of those icons or? No, it's, it was listed on the homepage for a little while. Um, if you just search for performance measurement, it should come up right away. It should be the, the first hit. I can double check right now. Uh, but it's there. Um, it, it basically is, gives a, create a, a data analysis of each, well, the departments that you have online, right? Yep. Okay. Thank you. If you search performance, it's the first one. Hi, uh, Rita Moreno, 8th Avenue. I'm a little concerned about all the news I heard this week about our police. In particular, because I follow health care uh, a lot, that you had one policeman and he, on his insurance he had his sister for a few years. I don't know exactly how many. I think you have to, you know, we're living in very hard times right now. You have to really check out people when they apply for health care for the city. You should see a birth certificate or a marriage license to see that they're a family. I mean, this, this is ridiculous to have your sister on a health plan and not know about it for a few years. I don't know whose fault it is, but whoever. And the other thing is, police are supposed to drive around and be our eyes and ears. Why do I have to call up when there's a box truck on my street for three days straight when I live in a residential neighborhood? I think it's very unfair. And then, to add to that, they come to your house and tell you what they're doing. Who wants to see them after that? They know that you called, right? You don't know who's living in your neighborhood, but they should be able to call up code. They should follow all the codes. Do they know the codes? Do they know the ordinance? That no box trucks are allowed on the street overnight, and nevertheless, three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then they can't do anything about it when you call them. Oh no, we have to tag the car, they have to do this. Everybody has privileges with the people that live here. It's very unfair. And I think you should really scrutinize every single person that's on health care in this town. Because I hear very strange stories that people just get married to be on our health plan because it's so great. And I'm not going to name anybody, but there are people that are just on our health plan just to get our, uh, they're on the, they get married just to be on a health plan. It's ridiculous, but that's the way it is today. 
because health care is so expensive. We're spending six million dollars a year on health care. Now, I mean, that, that, it's just outrageous what goes on here. When they ride around, they're supposed to see code, they're supposed to see illegals, they're supposed to see everything, but they don't see anything. You have to report it. And especially on weekends, and especially now that it's summer, it's, it's just outrageous. Two weekends in a row I've had this problem. And it's not the young cops that are here. I don't know if they're cops or specials or whatever they are, but they really don't know the ordinances, and they should be studied. People living here illegally, summer rentals, in and out. I mean, this is what's going on now. And it's up to the police department to help us. We'll help them, but don't come to my house after I report something. I mean, you don't know who's living next door to you right now. Okay. So, are you going to make sure that people are married and see their uh, their marriage license when you give them insurance? Don't you think that's uh, it's required by law? Huh? What the officer you're in question committed fraud. He committed a crime. We've we've been trying to work with the prosecutor's office to get the money back that the city paid in premiums. That is up to the prosecutor's office. But under the health care laws, we are required to provide marriage licenses, social security cards to prove, to prove that an event has happened that changes the health insurance. So everything you're saying is actually required by law and by opinions from the Division of Treasury. It's done. But when someone commits a crime, we don't know that they commit a crime because they're committing a crime until they get caught. So if someone provides a fake document, we don't have the ability to find you know if this is true or not but you are supposed to and you are required to provide the, that level of documentation so how does his sister get insurance as, as the by wife? fraud by a criminal act and that's why he's lost his job and he's losing his pension it's because he committed a crime that's right. it he submitted false paperwork it's a crime that's why he's no longer here he's resigned well, uh, maybe you can ask for another piece of ID, too. Like when you have to go get your driver's license, you have to <coughs> present five IDs. I mean, you're going to have to do something because insurance is too expensive today. And you know that, right, Michael? Michael? What? You know that, right? Yeah. The Sixth Amendment? The city's health insurance is too expensive. Is that what you're saying? Yes, McCarthy, First Avenue. Uh, I first would like to ask all the council members and the city manager, uh, how many times a month do you have to call Public Works uh, to get a street sweeper on your block? Each one of you, if you could answer that, please. Do you use your whole three minutes so you don't lose No, that? I want to know that first. Can you answer that or no? I, I couldn't even hear the question, I'm sorry. How many times a month do you have to call Public Works to get a street sweeper to come on your block? I've never called. The rest of you? They don't come to my store. I've never asked for one. If they come, they come. They don't come. Okay, well, I've been asking for 25 years. We haven't gotten uh, a street sweeper sign. So, they, you know, they don't come. I have to call. I clean up that stuff. Now you have, we're close to the beach. All the time you have all that stuff out there. Oh, I did get a sign. I thought you guys were working on it. I did get a sign in front of my house now. I have to pay to park, a per get a permit if I want to park in front of my house now. I'm sick and tired of cleaning up all this mess from all the beachfront people. You have done nothing. You told me you were, were working on it. Nobody's ever working on anything. So I want, starting this Tuesday, I want that my street cleaned. I clean enough other days down there. I want one day a week. Everybody else gets it in this town. And if they can't figure out how to move the cars, they can move them for parades, for, uh, for uh, running things, for drinking bashes on the streets. They can close off all the streets. I want my street clean. They can come down with the uh, blower and blow it off and clean it. Like I'm on a big corner. It took me an hour and a half. Nobody else cleans on the block. Everything washes down. I had one month 
the uh, United Methodist Church, the water was running for one month. Like Rita says, nobody sees it. We're calling, calling, called the environmental. There was water out there, the mosquito, everybody on the block's calling. Nobody sees it until we had that big rainstorm and then somebody else must have got it all the way down their block. I'm sick and tired of cleaning up around here. I'm, I don't mind doing it, but I'm not doing it when I don't get a street sweeper and I have to call them, aggravate them, aggravate my neighbors, say, try to, don't park your car. You know, really, it's ridiculous. And you bend over backwards for every other people that want to come into this town to do stuff. I don't, can't say, oh, I'm not going to pay my taxes because, uh, you know, uh, this year I'm doing something else or blah, blah, blah. So I want to know what you're going to do about this. I want somebody there on Tuesday, and if they have to bring a blower like I have to do and go around all these cars and clean it up, then that's what they have to do. So what's the answer? You gonna, is it going to happen or what? They're, they don't come. There's no signs. And let me tell you something. When I found out that, that's those people at my front lawn, I called uh, Public Works. He asked them what that, nobody knew what was going on. A little later, the guy comes back, and I go out there, and I said, what's this? And he says, oh, it's for permit parking. I came in and talked to you, and I asked you whose idea that was, and you said the parking commission. And I said, who's on that? You didn't know. I went downstairs and got an open request, and you're ahead of that committee. And you don't know who's on it. Hi, good evening. Nadine Brown. Better not close off any other streets in front of my apartment. Sunset Avenue. Uh, I'm, I'm here to complain about the trash cans and the rickety fence across the street from me at the Sunset Landing. I would appreciate it. I've been in touch trying for the past year to get somebody from um, code enforcement to come and do something about that. I shouldn't have to sit on my porch and look across the street at garbage cans, barrels, and a rickety fence and overgrown weeds. I pay my taxes in this town just like everybody else. I just called code enforcement on Monday. I just drove past there on the way from work and I see they look like they maybe cleaned up some brush or whatever that's on the curb, but the raggedy fence is still there, the garbage cans are still there, and if they can come and complain about a business on Main Street that I was watching on TV, and two weeks later you can send somebody down there to code enforcement to enforce, hopefully they did, I'm gonna drive by there on the way home to see if that business, what is it called, Medusa's or something, the new business that opened that had the trash cans and the fence out front, I heard Rita and Jerry complain about it a couple of weeks ago, and two weeks later you said you were sending out code enforcement. Well, I'm gonna ask you, could you please send out code enforcement to Sunset Landing to do something about that trash in front of my house? Because I don't wanna sit on my porch and look at trash cans. I shouldn't have to. It's been over a year now, and nobody seems to wanna do anything about it. So I'm asking you all to help if you don't mind. I don't know who you need to call, who you need to text or email. I would appreciate it. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Michael, go take care of that. Yeah. Okay. I'm waiting for the clock. Michael, that's Ms. Cummings, who I've emailed you. Okay. Yes. Go ahead, Bill. It, it's still like one minute and 15 seconds. Oh, okay. I probably will be quick. Uh, Lori Ross, Westside Community Center, 115 Dewitt Avenue. I'm here for, uh, the primary reason why I'm here today is because I never got the crime data, particularly as it relates to the shooting. Ma'am, I'm glad you mentioned the fence because we actually had a fence that was taken down by nefarious activity on Dewitt Avenue and people jumping the fence. So I'm glad she mentioned that because we're doing our best. We've got someone here that's actually a uh, blessing to us. Uh, for uh, property facility manager and we're addressing all of our issues but I never got the data that I was supposed to get just with regards to the number of shootings and it's not just about the shootings it's really trying to figure out what is the city's crime strategy how we can participate in that how we can get messaging out to the community and protect ourselves as much as possible because it is in fact a war zone over there um, I didn't say it, I'm not the only one that said it, but the reality is 
I have information from one property address over there by the West Side Community Center, and I'm not worried about myself as much as I'm worried about these children that may be innocent victims of the shooting, and one address alone has about 50 violations, which includes shots fired, rape, controlled dangerous substances, vehicle thefts, burglaries, animal calls, and I know we have an issue with uh, dog uh, uh, kettles or whoever's selling dogs. Well, I just want you all to know, if you don't already know, um, that pit bulls, there's a lot of pit bulls that don't make a sound. I was told anecdotally from somebody from the state police, that's what, what is happening, is the animal's vocal cords are being cut out so that when they are sick on a competitor drug dealer, you don't hear it. So it is in fact a lot of issues that still continue to persist and I never got this basic information. I'm surprised the council, the mayor and the council are not kept apprised as to what's going on. But like I said, I can be in the backyard at the center, which I am many times, in the back fence, I can see dogs, they're running around, but you don't hear them. And it was somebody from the state police that said, Lori, you better stay out of there at night. You better be careful because this is some of the, if you're seeing pit bulls that are running around loose and you don't hear them bark, it's because they're cutting out the vocal cords. I don't know that, but again, I'd like to know what is the city's crime plan, crime you know, strategy to address the crime. And I'm trying to figure out why I just didn't get the email with regards to even the shootings that seem to be unreported. It is in fact a war zone over there. Mr. Cabianco, in all due respect, you said you would get it to me a week, but again, I'm surprised that the council is not kept aware. Again, I'm an animal lover. I don't happen to have one now. My dog died several years ago. But again, when somebody from the state police is telling me that they're cutting vocal cords of precious animals and they're running around and they're being used as a weapon in the drug trade, that makes me concerned as well as possible victims being shot because of some of the stuff that's going on. That's all. Okay. Thank you. Can you check with Deputy Chief Kelso to see if the state police has made that report to her? And if they haven't, why not? And I think right now we're about to hear some tremendous news. I see Mr. Hobson, Mr. Gibson here, and uh, we're going to be standing up and clapping in a second. First of all, I'm Greg Hobson. I'm chairman of the Asbury Park Housing Authority. Mayor Moore, Deputy Mayor Quinn, Council and Administration, I actually came to report that we just signed the contract for 104 affordable units, which is considered Boston Way Village. As I promised you, I will come give you the news first. The contract's all signed. We will be moving ahead um, momentarily. Michael, thank you so much for all of your support, and special thanks to my good friend, Yvonne Clayton. Thanks for all your support. Thank you, have a great evening. Thank you, and thank you for having a special meeting. <laughs> you're gonna go celebrate. That's what okay. you're gonna do. Congratulations. Congratulations. Elder Hobson. Congratulations. But I'll be coming to see you. All right. Demo, demo in July? Demo in July. Okay, okay. What did you say? Demo. Good enough. That's close. Okay. Okay. Congratulations. That's wonderful news. So, Council Curtis Moreland, 115 D Wood Avenue. Mostly, you know my face. Uh, I've been in this town for a while. I've had uh, family and city government here, and I've been around for a while. So, 115 D Wood Avenue. I'm gonna make it real short and sweet. Elizabeth Avenue is a trap house behind us. Let's, let's make no qualms about it. It's a trap house. If you don't understand that definition, Google it. It's a trap house. We need to address these issues real quick because it's going crazy over there. I'm there every day, every day, and I'm gonna be there every day, and you're gonna see my face more. And I'm not bringing rah-rah, I'm bringing change. Regardless if y'all gonna help support us or not, 
it's going to happen regardless because that's just what's going to happen but it's a trap house on elizabeth we need to handle that we need to handle that so it's, it's real simple i'm not going to put people's information out on the street it's a trap house on elizabeth we need to take care of that real quick the landlord knows what's going on he don't give a rat's ass it's a trap house so away from that you're going to start seeing things happen over at the west side you're going to see things moving things happening like i said not a whole bunch of rah-rah i'm gonna move very quiet with or without any any funds from the city any monies whatever it's going to happen my foundation has grant money that god bless her soul my sister acquired for me before she passed away so i have funding I have pockets and connections. So it's going to happen. What I am asking you all to do, come stop by, visit, sit down, have a conversation. All of that other stuff that went in the past, it's in the past, y'all. We can't do nothing about it. All the rah-rah is done. It's over. It's a new day starting today. And I know many of you on that council board. Y'all know me personally. Y'all know me as Snoopy, not as Curtis Moreland. So it's a whole different level. So I'm asking y'all, come visit, come have a sit down, see what we're doing, understand the plan that's, that's going to be put in place for facility improvements and uh, programming that's going to be going on. We're going to do the summer food program, the meals uh, for breakfast and lunch. We're going to start out small to get stuff rolling again, but we already been approved. My director of that uh, program got certified today, yesterday, went to Red Bank, took the classes, and all done. So I just want y'all to, to come see what's going on. Have a sit down. It's a new day. That's all I'm saying. It's a new day. So and we need to handle that. We need to handle that. Hold on, man. Exactly. Are you saying that you're a member of, on the board now? I'm not on the board. Okay. I have a private nonprofit that right. is being housed now at the West Side Community right. Center. Hold up. I'd like to talk to you. To, with, uh, sit down and talk to you, mm -hmm. you and I, because I'm in that area all the time, checking. All so, right. that's all I ask y'all. Okay. Well, it, it's a new day. I'm telling you, all right, I will get with you, and we will talk. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, Conrad Neville, 1218 Sunset Avenue. Um, I wasn't going to get up today, but my neighbor did come, uh, Nadine, that lives at 2620. 220 Sunset Avenue, and I live at 218. And the Sunset Landing, I'm just dittoing, supporting what she, sh what she shared. It's been a long time that garbage cans have been out in front and a raggedy gate or fence or whatever. And it's been a long time. And it's like, it really needs to get resolved. Not only garbage cans, but oil cans, which is dangerous. It's a health hazard. And people come, when they're in their restaurants, they come out the restaurants and they look at the ducks and stuff like that. If someone is smoking a cigarette, it could be a has, I mean, it could be a real big thing. So it's not a little thing. And I, I really pray that you guys really take it very seriously. It's not pleasing looking out of your, you know, sitting on your porch, seeing it. That's one thing. But the safety issue with the oil, that is my most biggest concern. Because it and, and she's been doing it for a very long time. And please, please take it seriously and resolve it before someone gets hurt. Thank you. Thank you. You got that address? Hello, Mayor and Council, Jerry Scrano, Long Brand. Um, once again, thank you for the creating the bu uh, budget committee. I think that was a very good idea. So Felicia was correct about relocating people because they knocked down many radable along the beachfront, those garden apartments, that, but they were radable and we lost the taxes because some of those radables would pay $120,000 a year. I don't know what they give now as vacant parking lot, but that's what happened. You guys have given me a lot of things that I've asked for, like GPS and different things, you know, losing the health benefits for the old council and things like that. Well, 
I still like to see a timetable on the beachfront, on the redevelopment. And every project that we go forward should have a timetable. I really think that should be a priority. And you need a timetable for Convention Hall. Those panels been missing three or four years. That cop had probably been made into other ornamental things. You need to get that building straightened out. Um, I can't believe there's nobody from the Esplanade because I had a lot of crybabies called me up today to say they wanted you to talk about the noise at the Asbury Hotel. But I guess it can't be that important to them because they're not here. But they wanted me to bring it up to you guys. So uh, if you know about, about what I'm talking about, that'd be really helpful. I don't hear the noise. Rita doesn't hear the noise, so I don't hear the complaint. <laughs> um, now, with the GPS that I've been asking and the decals on the vehicles, I would like Michael to tell me how many vehicles we own, how many we pay for insurance, how many have decals, and how many have GPS, because then we can see what's going on, because other towns have GPS on all the vehicles. And if we have vehicles running to South Jersey or North Jersey, we should know how many times they stop at Home Depot or ShopRite and things like that. Um, You know, when they're talking about Elizabeth Street and other neighborhoods that are bad, why don't we have license plate readers right there so we can see who's coming and going? And that way the cop had the upper hand on what cars are running around. And we should be matching them up with Neptune and other city and see what cars are the runners so we can catch them in Asbury Circle or on Bangs Avenue or Route 35 or Route 66 so we don't always have to have the scene in Asbury Park where we look like we're the crime center. Let other towns pick up the cars in other towns. So if we had license plate readers, we should be pushing for that. And then happy Fourth of July to all you guys. I appreciate that. But could I get an answer about the cars for the next meeting? We have about 168 cars. I just pulled up our system. Um, I think 140 have GPS. And we're just waiting until we get the budget passed in September to finish the rest. Do you mean to put the decals on them? Uh, the decals don't have to go on every car. There's actually rules um, about what cars can and cannot get decals. Obviously, you don't put a police logo on an undercover car. No, I understand that. For certain cars, we've been using metallic um, things to for decals. So all the cars are shown correctly as far as I'm aware. We've looked at it in detail here. Um, we had a fixed asset company come in and review everything also about six weeks ago. So, yeah, we're in good shape with that. And can we talk to other town about license plate readers so it doesn't we look like we have all readers. the crime here? We have license Okay, thanks a lot. Happy 4th of July. Same to you, Jerry. Thank uh, you. And Jerry, there was an announcement made before you got here that the resolution related to the... Uh, there's a, there was an announcement at the workshop session before you got here, the resolution related to the Asbury Hotel is tabled. Okay. That's why the Esplanade's not here. Hi, Ernest Mignoli, uh, 400 Thiel Lake Drive, Asbury Park. I'm actually the person behind the Elizabeth Street, uh, quote, citizen investigation. That place is, is something that belongs on... America's most dangerous and it's right next to a place for children it's beyond belief what goes on there I actually had the code department in there and it, it's it's stated that it's owned by two people that live in I think an ocean a husband and a wife however they're using it as a four uh, rooming house rooming house so I send in code and zoning and the person in a jolly fashion, tells the inspectors, oh, the, these are my lovers. I'm, I'm not married. I'm certain lifestyle. And these males are my lovers. And they just write it, okay, fine, so you can stay. It exists today. Now, a person in there that's a good friend of mine as a photographer actually reported the crime in this building. And when the police showed up, they arrested my friend and put him in jail for 50 days. They accused him of the crimes that the crackheads in there were actually committing, and they arrested my friend. I didn't find out he was in jail until 50 days later. He's a diabetic, he's a veteran, and he wound up, I had to go and get him out. It cost me $1,500 to get him out, and I brought him to the hospital where he stayed for over a month, and he had part of his foot amputated. He deserves that, 
Then we go into court in Asbury Park, and all the charges against him are dropped and found to be felonious. And the people who accused him are these crackheads, and that's the way it happens. And uh, look, we're beyond the point where this is sensational. In three minutes, you can't do justice to what's going on in this city. It is a horrible crime scene. It's the fourth most dangerous place in New Jersey by violent crimes, FBI statistics. And, and, and yet, this council, this mayor, this city manager are involved in Twilight Zone things. Who cares about a parade? Who care? I don't care about anything. I care that I live here. I'm a victim of violent crime. I was almost killed. I was an attempted robbery victim walking on Park Avenue near the judge's house on the way to Main Street, and you can't get anything. And when you say, well, check with Kelso. Well, check with Kelso, check with Salerno. They did nothing for the city. They do nothing. How does someone work, 26 seconds, how do these people work nine to five? They're driving our city cars. They do nothing. They know nothing about crime. You can't reach them. They cover everything up. And look what's going on with Neptune. We have German, a fugitive police officer. How many years was he on the force? All of a sudden, we find out he's a bad guy. 16 years he was here. 16 years. You know? We need more than three minutes. Advil, if you want to talk, it's now. Okay. No, I know, but last time he, he got shut out, so. Advil Robinson, 225 Third Avenue. My concern was we had some um, workforce people came down. I sat with the city council manager. They came to introduce some, um, some, pro some pilot programs they wanted to introduce. I never got any information back on that. I was wanting a response on that. Also was concerned with the new Boston Way project. They had an um, email that was sent out. We really all didn't get it. It was supposed to be the 25th. I wish you appreciate to have more outcome with the applications. And also the beach project down there, they're starting to hire people. I was one of the first to go to, to Fields and also to the guys that was introducing the, the hiring process. I'm uh, not on the list at this time. I've been circulating my information to them. I just wanted some answers on you know, the job um, process with that at the beach, the Boston Way, and also the pilot program that um, me and the city council um, manager sat down with the people from the workforce um, development came to speak to us about two months ago. point directly through them. Oh, okay, because I was on the list. They said they emailed me. I was at the beach working at another area, but I was concerned with that construction because it could lead me into a career. So I was wondering how that process went. But it's definitely just with them. At this time, at like this time. Yvonne said, once they start their workforce initiative, which we made part of the project, then we'll be more involved in it and there'll be much more information out as far as apprenticeships and jobs and opportunities. Okay. Uh, Boston Way, check with uh, Greg Hobson or Danny Gibson. Right. If you need a phone number, I'll give you a phone number. Uh, is, they, they were just here, like Yvonne said, and they passed uh, the resolution tonight. Uh, so Boston Way is a reality. They're gonna knock it down in August and then start building. 
I know they put out some paperwork a month or so ago looking for people too. So I'm sure they haven't hired anybody yet. You can go there. Uh, okay. Okay. Good. Uh, so anything, we'll get you this application okay. either at the end of the meeting or you just want to come out. And I just want to say to you, try not to get discouraged. Some things get take a little bit more time than others. Correct. This is a new process. And we talk, you know, when you come by the house, we talk every day or every other day or something. But try to try to hang in there as much as you can. All right? Good to see you. That way you don't have to hang around. Yeah. And if you have any more calls. Yeah. Okay. I'll talk to you later. Thank you. Motion to close. Move it. Second. <laughs> we move on to minutes. We have three sets of minutes this evening. Executive session minutes of June 14, 2017. Workshop minutes of June 14, 2017. And regular session minutes of June 14, 2017. Can I have a motion to approve, please? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Consent agenda, resolution 2017-208, resolution approving special event applications. Resolution 2017-209, resolution to approve place-to-place -place transfer for DB Ventures LLC, Johnny Mack. Resolution 2017-210, resolution of the City of Asbury Park making application to New Jersey Local Finance Board pursuant to NJSA 48 colon 3-1 at SEC and previous approvals by said board. 2017-211, resolution authorizing the transfer and refund of overpayment made an error on a property block block 3703, lot 5.01, and block 3703, lot 5.105. Resolution 2017-12, resolution authorizing cancellation of refund and municipal tax sale certificate due to titled, uh, transfer title for block 1005 lot 1 resolution 2017-213 resolution of the city of Asbury Park releasing performance bond for 603 Lake Avenue and accepting their maintenance bond resolution 2017-214 resolution approving award of contract for a regional contribution agreement for 1421 Madison Avenue resolution 2017-215 a resolution authorizing the submission of a grant application for 2017 Cops and Shop Summer Shore Initiative Grant Program and 2017-216 Resolution Authorizing the Acceptance of Community Development Block Grant for Fiscal Year 2017. Would anybody like any of those resolutions moved off tonight's agenda? Uh, yes, the recreation one. I think the city manager has something to say about that. What? As a request uh, for for police officers at the top floor. We want to be able to talk to them to see if we can get them at their expense. You're talking about the sign up? Yes. At the sign up. Oh, it's a sign up. I uh, recommended like that they pay um, pay a police officer to be there because of the situation that's going on now. Okay. I have a motion to approve, approve the consent agenda. Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. <clears throat> well, on to individual resolutions. The first one is Resolution 2017 217, Resolution Authorizing the Payment of Bills. Councilmember Chapman abstains from Purchase Order 17 00997. Can I have a motion to move, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? No. Uh, resolution 2017 to Resolution authorizing appointments to the Sunset Lake Commission. Most of these are reappointments. Patrick Rayling with a exp expiration date of 63019. Mark Axe. Expiration 6-30-19. Randy Moore, expiration date of 6 -19. And then Jamie Nidal, Nidal has been moved from an alternate member to a regular member with an expiration date of 6 -30 -19.
have a motion to approve, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Sorry, I missed you. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-219. This is the resolution approving 2017 and 2018 liquor license renewal. Can I have a motion to approve, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-220, which is renewing 210 Fifth Avenue Venture Urban Renewal, which is also the Asbury Hotel, has been pulled from this evening's agenda. Next will be Resolution 2017-221, a resolution approving liquor license with special conditions to DB, DB Ventures LLC doing business as Johnny Max for 2017-2018 licensing year. Move it. Second. Before the council takes a vote on this matter, is there anyone here from the public that would like to be heard on the renewal of the liquor license for Johnny Max? I would. Then please approach the microphone. How much time do I have? It's not restricted. Okay. Can I repeat my request? Yes. Ernest McNally, 400 Deal Lake Drive, Asbury Park. I am more than adequately and intimately involved in observation of Johnny Mac over the years. Uh, there's problems with, in my observation, over-serving, over-crowding. There's no parking. They're coning off 71. They're blocking the handicap. They're blocking the two-hour parking. They're using the two-hour parking for themselves all day. If you look at the crime statistics on Friday and Saturday, what the city of Asbury goes through to support this business is beyond belief. Resources are pulled from every quadrant in Asbury, in addition to the two, four, or six privates that have been hired that basically <coughs> are paid by these organizations, so they have no motivation to really stop what's going on because, hey, that'll be the end of overtime. And when you're the lowest paid, worst performing police force probably in the, the state of New Jersey, you need that overtime. And I filed some Oprah's. Johnny Mac has no permits for anything he's doing there with that parking. He has two driveways that he uses for parking. State of New Jersey, you can't use a driveway for parking. And you can't especially cone it off. So I file the Oprah, guess what? Got no zoning variance, got no permit has no nothing. All he's got is Johnny Mac, which from my observation, he operates like the mayor of the city. I mean, he's involved with ten, twenty thousand dollar donations for political things. He runs political campaigns out of there. There's uh, uh, law enforcement drinking going on there that I observed firsthand and, and, and more. For me, I was at a planning meeting and, and the architect made a statement that said, isn't it great what Johnny Mack is trying to do with that block now with, with what's, the, what's the latest Mack we're having now? Baby Mack on the corner? What's the new Mack? So I got Johnny Mack, Kim Mack, Joe Mack, G. I think on the corner is Mary Mack. And so he's showing this rendition and he's saying, it's wonderful. You know, when people stop at the train and they look at that block, it's so symbolic of Asbury. What this business person has done, are you kidding me? That's a dump, it's a rat trap, it's a fire trap. It's nothing but crime, drinking, drugs, violence. They have weekends, people with bottles, breaking bottles over each other's heads. They threw Lieutenant White in uniform through the plate glass window. That's not the first time somebody went through the plate glass, plate glass window. And what I find most objectionable that's the political campaign center for most of the places in this city. As a matter of fact, when this whole group was sworn in, at the end it was drinks for everybody at Johnny Max. You know, can you make this up? So I would say anything Johnny Max wants to do, the only thing he could do good for us is move out of this town because the, 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 the draw of resources to keep that business going is inordinate. It's inordinate. 
It's beyond belief. And what does he pay? Property taxes like anybody else. I'm on the north, uh, north end. I'm near killed and, and crime. And every time, like when I was near killed, what was it? Fourth of July at midnight. You tell me where all the police cars are Fourth of July at midnight. They're at Porta. They're at Johnny Max. They're at Bond Street. And they're at all these other gin mills that are just crime scenes. And they're, they're in my opinion, they're killing Asbury. They're killing us. We can't walk at night. We can't get police protection. And these people are held out as, as heroes, like they're, what they're doing for Asbury. Look, if you trace Johnny Mac's history with 15 bars, every place in New York, wherever he's got them, the neighborhood wants him out. He, he's a menace to those places. And, and when I report this, by the way, he and his, his crew of bouncers think they have the right to come up to citizens. Like, you can't stand here. You can't walk here. You can't take a picture of this illegally parked car. Are they kidding me? Where are we, Guatemala? I don't know if I left anything out, but my answer is no. <laughs> I, I say approve him for nothing, not one thing. <coughs> and and I, think, I feel that we should be able to have lawyers here for anything he tries to do. I mean, he almost knocked down that white building in the back with those undocumented workers. You, you see the what we went through with that? And, and then uh, Vaccaro knocks down the dentist building by mistake without even cordoning it off. And they laugh. I mean, when was the last time anybody checked the capacity at this place? You know, there is a capacity. So what does he do? He comes up with flammable curtains to let people smoke while they drink. Then he's got standing propane heaters, which are illegal. And you can't get a fire marshal in there except to collect $10,000 checks. And by the way, Johnny Mac gave a $10,000 check to the fire marshal in some capacity. I'd like to know what that went for. It, it shouldn't be. He shouldn't be. <coughs> Thank you. Sorry. I, I can't be the Ernie, but uh, Main Street, that's, that's a disgrace the way it looks. We're going to do Main Street over, and we're going to have Johnny Mac sitting there with that place the way it looks. It's, it's really not for Main Street. I don't know what it's for, but it's not for Main Street. Main Street's supposed to look better than that. And, and you took away his parking lot, you let him do that when we, when we need parking lots. And what has he got in there, a beer garden? What's he got there? Everybody wants to know. I mean, it's, I don't know, I can't beat Ernie, but just my personal opinion, it's a disgrace that it's on Main Street. I don't know where it belongs, maybe nowhere, but you, you can't let somebody operate like that. You just can't. And, and he does it arrogantly. If you even look at him cross-eyed, he tells you off. I mean, like, it's just unbelievable what that place is like. And everybody that passes it says the same thing. What is that? And, and if that's what you want on Main Street, when they're going to do Main Street over, I don't think so. But that's all I have to say. And I, as a resident, roll call. Well, actually, before the council votes, if I could, Mayor, just take a moment and let the public know that in addition to the existing special condition that previously applied to the Johnny Max uh, liquor license, which requires that 75% of the floor space shall be dedicated to food service. There are an additional seven new special conditions that the council with this resolution will be imposing upon the liquor license with its renewal. Those seven separate special conditions include the hiring of uh, three off-duty police officers on specified days um, and additional special police officers, all as set forth in the resolution. And there are provisions relating to hours uh, and everything is set forth in the resolution, but I just wanted people to know that there are additionally seven new special conditions that are being imposed on this license with its renewal. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Mayor, Council. do you want me to read them? No, I, yeah, I mentioned three. All right, no, I'll go through, I'll, I'll, fair enough, I'll go through each one of them. The first one, the licensee shall hire three off-duty police officers on Fridays and Saturdays from Memorial Day weekend through Labor Day weekend, including nights before holidays from 10.30 p.m. through 3 o'clock a.m. 
if a substantial weather event is anticipated, which will likely cause a reduced crowd to patronize the tavern, such as a hurricane, the tavern may call the police department at least two hours before the shift to request that the third officer not be required to work, which final decision will be decided by the chief of police or their designee. The second one is the license shall hire two off-duty police officers on Fridays and Saturdays and nights before holidays from 10.30 p.m. to 2.30 a.m. from the weekend after Labor Day through the weekend before Memorial Day. The third is if requested by the chief, the licensee will provide camera footage from security personnel who wear GoPro body cameras if the footage is available at the time the request is made. Number four, the licensee shall employ only techniques of alcohol management certified bartenders and or ensure that bartenders attend the next available such course. The next special condition is the licensee shall place additional temporary barriers outside of their entrance slash exit to deter patrons from jaywalking across Main Street. The barriers shall be placed on the sidewalk by the curb line, not in the street, not later than 10 o'clock p.m. and shall be removed not later than 3 o'clock a.m. on Friday and Saturday evenings and when special events have been advertised or larger crowds are expected. By way of example, the Wednesday prior to Thanksgiving, Memorial Day weekend, Fourth of July, Labor Day weekend, the Zombie Walk, and the St. Patrick's Day Parade. The next condition is a representative of the licensee and or their security manager shall meet with or have a telephone call with the chief of police on a monthly basis during the first week of each month. And the last new special condition is the chief shall have the discretion to relax the foregoing conditions after consultation with and approval of the mayor and council and city manager. And those are the additional special conditions. Yes. No, these are new ones, Ernest. What, the, the private police are out there all the time? What's new about it? It's now a condition of the liquor license. If they violate it, charges can be brought against the liquor license but, but before they even what see I, What I'm saying, I, I don't think, at least for a year, I've done an intensive observation and study. I don't think they've ever not been there. So why are we saying that, Addition, well, now you, now you have to- Additional men and additional hours were added. If you want to get last year's and compare it to this year's, you'll see the difference. But, but uh, look, every, everyone knows you go in there, there's no register of seat, uh, seats. There's no ABC going in there. There's a, there's a capacity that's violated. I mean, it, 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 it looks, you ever see like when somebody drops a cookie on the sidewalk in the summer and all the ants come running? Mm -hmm. You know, imagine like if you said, okay, 10 ants you can have the cookie, but imagine 2,000 come. That's what that place looks like. It's a fire trap. It's gonna kill somebody. It's eminent. There's no question about it. The thing is, it's considered the eminent watering hole for government, police, and everybody. I don't understand how the police, who have had this baby since it opened, are, are put, it, it's like Dracula in charge of a blood bank. What are the police gonna do? They're part of it. They're in there most of the time, watering hole. You know, they get specials on parking and drinks and, you know, it's nothing new. Why, let's get it out on TV. Let's do something about it. These things are cursory. That really means nothing. The man needs to be checked for over-serving, number one. The thing about food, everybody knows that pizza thing is a joke. Nobody goes there for pizza. They, it, when they're handed a pizza, they throw them in the garbage. It, it's only so that, you, that they can meet this requirement. You ever taste that pizza? I heard it's like, Old shirt cardboard, it's terrible. They're in there for tequila and who knows what else they're sprinkling in these drinks. You know, the people that come out of there are so dangerous and I've been in the most dangerous places in the world and I gotta tell you, the people that come out of that place, even the police are in fear of it. What, what, what does this all mean? Why, in other words, what this means is, okay, the chief has the ability to relax this well, how about putting in there the chief has the ability to, to kind of do the opposite? That's what he did. Who did? The chief made the recommendations to put more constraints on the gentleman's liquor license, and he just read the seven new ones to yeah. you. Compare last year's to this year, and you'll see the difference. And I don't know why he always gets the title gentleman, by the way. You know, I, I report all this crime and corruption, and I'm called a no-good slug. <coughs> Johnny Mac is called a gentleman, a scholar, the gift to Asbury, the savior. 
the benefactor. What? Are, are you kidding me? Johnny Mac? What, what's the deal? Is it his money? What is it that makes this thing roll over here? This dump. It's nothing but a crime dump, a crime scene. You want anybody's kids to walk near that? I mean, what are we doing about this? The city manager knows nothing about it. Why don't we camp him at <coughs> the weekend? <coughs> yeah, I know, 2.30 in the afternoon. You gotta be there at 10.30 at night till three in the morning to see what goes on in this city. It, it'll bring you to tears and fear at the same time. And the thing is, the people that you're putting to police all of this, they're part of it. They're part of it. I try and get police officers to, to get breathalyzers for driving while intoxicated, and they come at me like I'm, I'm some kind of commando from out of space. Well, look, I don't care if you're on the police force, and I don't care if you're related to all these people. If I watch you in a bar drink 30 drinks, and then go out, piss in the street, get in your, I'm sorry, excuse me, get in your car, and just because you're an off-duty police officer, that's not gonna make it. And then when I do call the police and say, go get them, they say, well, you know, we rode by, we didn't see anything. Hello? They're all related. It's like nepotism and related back three generations. You know, one time somebody ought to be up here prepared, not like me, emotional, but uh, pr prepared with all the data what's gone on here for 40 years. And you're gonna see that this is a nepotistic crime scene. Roll call. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-222, resolution approving liquor license for, with special conditions for Porta Asbury LLC doing business as Porta for 2017-2018 licensing year. Have a motion, please. Move it. Second. And uh, before we open up the Porta liquor license resolution to the public, um, given what just transpired with regard to Johnny Max, I'll read these propose new special conditions first and any member of the public can get up and comment. The new special conditions that council is considering placing on the Porta liquor license for the 2017-2018 licensing year include the following. The licensee shall hire two off-duty police officers during the months of October, November, December, January, February, and March on Friday and Saturday nights from 10.30 p.m. until 2.30 a.m. The licensee shall hire four off-duty police officers during the month of April on Friday and Saturday nights from 10.30 p.m. until 2.30 a.m. The licensee shall hire four off-duty police officers during the months of November, December, January, February, and March from 10.30 p.m. until 2.30 a.m. when special events have been advertised or larger crowds are expected, by way of example, the Wednesday prior to Thanksgiving and New Year's Eve. The licensee shall hire six off-duty police officers during the months of May through September on Friday and Saturday nights from 10.30 p.m. until 2.30 a.m. During these times, at the sole discretion of the deputy chief, up to eight off-duty police officers may be required. Further, during these times, at the sole discretion of the deputy chief, up to two off-duty police officers of the total number to be provided may be provided in police vehicles. The licensee shall hire 24 security guards on Friday and Saturday nights. The licensee, in coordination with the police department, shall have private security and or off-duty police officers to patrol the blocks west of Porta at the end of the night as patrons move to their cars and cabs. The licensee's private security shall not interact with patrons in slash individuals, but shall report any concerns slash issues to the city police officers. The licensee shall eliminate 16-ounce mixed drinks from the club menu and serve mixed drinks in glass sizes no larger than 12 ounces. The security and bar staff shall clean sidewalks and curbs adjacent to the Porta property nightly after club nights and in the morning following club nights. The licensee shall install video surveillance signs inside and outside of the licensed premises to advise patrons and the public that, quote, warning this property under video surveillance, you are being videotaped, end quote, or wording of similar import. The licensee shall include on their website, on social media platforms, flyers, and other forms of paper slash physical and digital advertisement that identification is required, that two forms of identification may be required, the type slash form of acceptable identification and the required dress code. The licensee shall use a mo movable sign to advise individuals online to enter the licensed premises that identification is required, that two <laughs> forms of identification may be required, 
the type slash form of acceptable identification and the required dress code, as well as continuing to maintain the existing sign with the same information by the entrance to the licensed premises. The licensee shall require from the Friday evening on Memorial Day weekend through Monday evening on Labor Day weekend a $10 cover charge for entrance to the licensed premises starting at 12 o'clock midnight. The licensee shall prohibit any patron or person except for employees who leaves the licensed premises after 1 a.m. from re-entering the licensed premises. A representative of the licensee and or their security manager shall meet with or have a telephone call with the deputy chief of police on a monthly basis during the first week of each month. And finally, uh, the deputy chief shall have the discretion to relax the foregoing conditions after consultation with and approval of the mayor and council and city manager, except as provided in condition four above. And those are all of the new special conditions the council is considering imposing on the renewal of the liquor license for Porta. And with that, would anyone from the public like to be heard regarding the renewal of the Porta liquor license with those conditions? Lori Ross, 115 Dewitt Abbey, the West Side Community Center. Of course, my concern is that manpower, police man and woman power is, are taken away from other parts of the town, particularly those of high crime areas, like the West Side Community Center, and diverted over there to these for-profit, clearly for-profit businesses. My question, particularly as it relates to Porter, has anybody checked with the county with regards to any alleged drug going on in, in that establishment? Has anybody tracked the data on any, any crime, uh, loitering, urinating, uh, fighting, controlled uh, <coughs> dangerous substances, uh, vehicular issues? Also, when was the last time and what were the results of the fire code official visiting there, the tax assessor, uh, ABC, is, is, is there any data contained about the incidents to include, I heard anecdotally, that folks are parking by the parkway exit and they're getting transported in mass to Florida and the, some of these other establishments and then they're getting back to the parkway exit, um, the rest stop, and driving away drunk. So again, my concern is, particularly with this establishment and possibly the others too, has anybody been checking for, for you know, some of the drug trafficking that's alleged at that establishment? Because I've heard a whole lot of stuff, but again, my concern is you've got limited police resources. You probably have an understaffed police department. There are other high crime areas in the city. So while everybody's partying on the other side of town, you've got all this other stuff going on in the other parts of the town. So I know that we can track data. So is there any data with regards to that? You, you asked the, probably 30 questions in one big question, but obviously the data was tracked and that's why some of these uh, conditions were put on because of the amount of calls, because of uh, calling police from different sides so the police numbers were up. So yes, that was, we, we just didn't arbitrarily pull these numbers out. This was recommendations from the police department be, because of the amount of calls to this establishment. So how long is it gonna be monitored after the fact? So you are gonna more than likely approve this. Then what kind of monitoring mechanism? Are you gonna revisit this issue every quarter or is it for the whole year? Once you say yes, they're good to go for a year, they'll party on this summer so and people, then if, if next summer we'll go back to the drawing board. people make complaints, then we can revisit it. Well, the only catch I'm gonna to make to that is putting restrictions on the liquor license is for a year, and this is our one shot to do it. So to my point, thank you, Deputy Mayor Quinn. So this is their chance to get yes, and then next year it will be potentially If there's problems over the course of the next year, we'll up the special restrictions again like we did this year. Yes, I just hope we don't have any fatalities. If there's major problems yeah, during the middle of the year, more restrictions. The they city could be another can here. file charges against the licensed right. premises. We don't have to wait to next July. Incidents that happen after they place these conditions on the license. So that's a good point, uh, Mr. Raffetto. Have there been any charges with any of these establishments? I heard something about a propane tank and all of that. That seems like that's a violation that could potentially close some of these folks up. So, like I said, all my my biggest concern is is that we want to make sure that the public is safe whether they're residents or visitors. And again, 
to your point, Mr. Verfetto, have any complaints ever been filed by any of these establishments or against any of these establishments within the past few years? I don't believe that the city has filed charges against the liquor license on any licensees in recent years. I know there was one going back a number of years regarding the fast lane that no longer exists, but not in recent <coughs> years. The city has uh, <coughs> imposed special conditions at the time of renewal, which is right now, because the licensing year runs from July 1st of each year through June 30th of the year. And that's the appropriate time for special conditions to be imposed on a liquor license. However, if there are incidents that transpire during the course of the year, the, the remedy is for the, the city to file charges against the licensed premises uh, to either seek a suspension or revocation of the liquor license or to seek to impose additional special conditions which would be subject to a hearing. But any special conditions have to relate directly to the service of alcohol and not be um, the types of violations that could be addressed through other mechanisms uh, such as through code enforcement or the fire official. Um, if it goes to specifically directly to the liquor license, then yes. But if there are other channels to address those types of violations, whether it be through the police department, code, fire, or whatnot, uh, those particular departments or agencies would handle those on a case-by-case -case basis. And just because we have a governor that is on the opiate addiction issues and treatment and all of that, um, we've got prevention first in the county. There's children that actually live in these areas and live in the town. Has there ever been a thought to, you know, get them engaged in some sort of alcohol awareness and in terms of you can't stop somebody that's 21 from drinking, but certainly we need to educate these young folks that this is not necessarily the best way to go, particularly when there are schools near the area, there's you know, churches, the whole nine. And, and it, you know, I don't know, if I were five years old, seven years old, 12 years old, if I lived in the Central Business District or near the Central Business District, near the waterfront, I'd be concerned about some of the stuff that I hear goes on that the next day children see. So there, there should be some emphasis on this town to educate these young folks to say, maybe we might wanna say prevention, that's all. Uh, I just wanted to say, how come the hours are different for Johnny Mac and Porter? Johnny Mac is 3 a.m. and Porter is 2 and 2.30. What's that about? Shouldn't they all be the same time? <coughs> isn't, it, isn't 2 o'clock the last time you can get a drink? I thought there was a two o'clock closing. You're right. There yes. Is a huh? yes. Yes. There is a two o'clock closing. It's, well, if it's three o'clock for Johnny Mack. Well, it's not. It's not closing at three o'clock. That's having the off-duty police officers stationed at the premises until three a.m. Till three o'clock. Yes. Right. They stay after. At Johnny Max. Oh. Uh, at Portis, it's two and two thirty. Two thirty. How come? These right. recommendations came from the police department. Huh? I said these recommendations came from the police department, so I presume they have a rationale for why they have the specific conditions relating to each premises, but they, they came directly from the police. Tom Bernstein, Holy Fielding Drive, Asbury Park. If I'm not sure, when Porter originally pitched this business to us, it was that it was going to be a pizzeria. It was going to run kind of to like 10, 11 o'clock at night. And then they kind of looked around and said, wait a minute, you know, look at Bond Street, look at Ale House, look at Johnny Max, you know. Let's run a nightclub and let's invite really dangerous people who want to do bad things from all over. And you know what? I know police chiefs in all surrounding towns and they thank Asbury Park because everyone who used to do what they do here, there, now do it here. Bar A has no more problems. All these, they have some problems, but most of the serious drinkers, people looking to drive drunk, mix opioids, fight, now come here from Perth Amboy. We have the train service for them. They come in Ubers. They come in these big party vans where they park on the parkway. The driver was telling me, 
I make them sign a $250 waiver because every time they come out of the bars, they're so drunk, they're puking all over my limousine. But then I bring them to the parkway and they get in their cars and they drive home. Hello, you know, they're killing people around here. And then when the sheriff sets up sobriety checkpoints here, they set it up in the parking lot, in the municipal lot, and who do they check? The people coming out of Allenhurst. Hello, I mean, you know? And then we read in the paper, even the equipment they're using, the sheriff's tampering with the equipment, the guy got caught, right? You, you wonder why, because you see all these people in these gin mills. I mean, liquor and alcohol, it's, it's like an infected the world. And I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not a, uh, like a religious fanatic. It, it's just, it's crime and corruption. That's what it lends to. If you look at these other restaurants in Asbury, they're beautiful. You look at how nice families come here. They have some drinks. 10.30, 11 o'clock, they're done. They're going home. They're not looking to be around vomiting and, and beating up police and stuff. That's not what they're here for. You sit on Cookman <coughs> and you look at 10 o'clock on the weekends and it's like a, the tide goes in and out. Look at the clientele change. When you see what comes here at 10 o'clock, they shouldn't even be allowed in the city. They should not. They come in here drunk and high. And then you add what they do here. How do we go in these bars? No registers working. How do you say, you know, I think you overserved that person. They come out of Johnny Max, they collapse from alcohol poisoning. The ambulance can't even get in there because they block up all the front with their cones and their employee barking. You ever watch it? I invite anybody here. Come with me Friday and Saturday night between 10 and 3 a.m. You'll see something that'll make my hair stand on it. It's unbelievable. And yet, it's approved year after year after year. And I don't know how, but you name all these officers, private duty with weapons doing their job there. Why do we need six or eight police cars to be pulled from everywhere else? I have never seen a night where there's not six, eight, ten police cars pulled from the west side, the north side, everywhere else to help these guys under siege. It's, how, how's that fair? I can't even get a patrol schedule. You ever try and talk to Salerno or Kelso? I want to know about the north, uh, north end. Are they patrolling? You know, I'm a victim of violent crime. I have to walk in the dark. Well, we can't tell you that. Well, sure, they're all, they're all, you know where they are. It, it, it. Mayor, please, somebody's got to come and watch it. I document it. I used to send stuff to the national news. I sent a double arm robbery at Porta last year. Double arm robbery on either side of Porta. It aired on national news. I didn't see anything happen. What happened? Nothing. I mean, you know, all we like, we have police officers on the run. We just had a, a what, a 15 year police officer cooperating with gangs. This is German. They just got him in, uh, in North Carolina. Well, all of a sudden, he was a bad guy on one day. I thought the 17 years he worked here, giving up all our information, telling all the gangs where the police okay, are. Er Ernest, keep That's it to the, speech. keep, no, keep, you can keep on talking, but keep it to the port uh, license. Well, where do you think he did his business? All his prostitutes <laughs> were in that area. Wait, what, what are we, Twilight Zone? Where do you think all the prostitutes and drug addicts are around here? Johnny Max, uh, 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 Bond Street, Porta, and the transportation center. And then we have other police officers picking them up off the ground and forcing them to have sex like Martinez. Where's he now, Martinez? These police officers. kind of rational emotive therapy or something. They just, they can't control their addictions. And it's, you know, read the newspaper. Am I making this up? You know they just caught German now, right? In North Carolina, you don't know. The city manager doesn't know. A fugitive, an Asbury Park fugitive that endangered this whole We're not talking about that. And they just apprehended him. And, and stick stick, stick on Porta, please. Oh, All right. Oh, we're we're talking Florida. about the restrictions placed on Porta. It is Porta. Porta Porter and Johnny Mac and Bond Street cause all this. Okay. They're one and the same. And now they're trying to connect under Cookman Avenue in the tunnels. You ever been in the, there's an underground <coughs> tunnel thing that they're digging. All right, thank oh, you. Oh, you gotta go in the tunnels, Your Honor. It's, I mean, Mayor, it's a great thing. I hear you go down there, it's like nothing else. They got like these special stalagmites and stalactites. And thank you for your comments. Thank you. Why? Are you
cut me off? But you're straying from the subject, Ernest. We're What's strained from the subject? Because we're talking These about Florida, addressing. and you're bringing well, about sir. North Carolina that I don't know what I know. So how do you know what I know and I don't know? So well, stick I to asked you if you know they just apprehended. And you didn't give me a chance to answer. I wasn't going to answer. Right, yeah, I, I saw it on the news this morning. I read the newspaper every day. Okay, you can come to my house. I've given you my home phone number. Right, I don't know what else to give you. How did I mean, he work here for 17 years? That has nothing to do with the Florida license. Right. Stick well, you know, Ms. Quinn, you finally said something. I appreciate it. <laughs> okay. From your campaign to headquarters at Johnny Mac, you finally said something. Good for you. All right, we have a motion and a second. Move it. Second. We had one. They were Do roll ball. Council Member Chapman. Yes. Council Member Clayton. Yes. Council Member Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2017-223, resolution authorizing purchase of vehicle for building department. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2017-224, resolution authorizing the purchase of park parking pay station. Have a motion to move, please. Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2017-225, authorizing the City of Asbury Park to enter into a memorandum of agreement with sponsors of the city's bike station, bike share system. Can I have a motion, please? Move, Move it. it. Second. Comments or questions? Council Member, Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-226, resolution approving change order number one for Sunset Lake Footbridge contract to TNM Associates. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-227, resolution of the Mayor City Council of the City of Asbury Park authorizing the execution of easements and other documents in furtherance of the redevelopment and land disposition agreement and ground lease with Michael's Development Company as redeveloper of certain parcels located within City Springwood Avenue redevelopment area. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Ordinances for introduction. Ordinance 2017-31, amending and supplementing Chapter 2, Administration, Section 2-47.7, Terms of Service, Sunset Lake Commission of the Code of the City of Asbury Park. Can I have a motion to introduce, please? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing for this ordinance is scheduled for July 12, 2017. Ordinance introduced 2017-32, uh, an ordinance establishing a restricted parking space for use of handicapped persons at property located at 1034 and a half Sewell Avenue, Apartment B, in the City of Asbury Park, and amending and supplementing Section 7-36 entitled Handicapped Parking, a Chapter 7 Traffic of the Revised General Ordinances of the City of Asbury Park. Can I have a motion to introduce, please? Move, Move it. it. Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Cal Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing for this ordinance is scheduled for July 12, 2017. Ordinance 2017 33, an ordinance authorizing the City of Asbury Park to convey an easement over certain portions of right of way airspace adjacent to the property located at 700 Bangs Avenue. Block 2508, Lot 2. Can I have a motion to introduce, please? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. This ordinance is scheduled for public hearing on July 12, 2017. Ordinance 2017-34, Ordinance of the City of Asbury Park amending traffic and parking regulations, Chapter 7, Section 20. Can I have a motion to introduce, please? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing is scheduled for July 12, 2017. 
Second reading, public hearing, ordinance 2017-25, an ordinance amending and supplementing section 4-1, business licenses, by adding subsection 4-1.10, sale of animals of chapter four, general licensing of the code of the city of Asbury Park, New Jersey. Can I have a motion to open this ordinance up to the public, please? Move it. Move it. Second. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, I'm looking to get a vegan Can pizza. You state at, your name and address, yes. please. Uh, Brian Hackett, uh, New Jersey State Director for the Humane Society of the United States. Uh, our business address is 700 Professional Drive in Gaithersburg, Maryland. Our mailing address here is P.O. Box 248 in Helmetta, New Jersey. I'm a New Jersey resident, and I'll be very brief, because as I started out saying, I want to go get a vegan pizza at Tallulah's. So, um, I want to thank the mayor and council for pushing this ordinance ahead. Uh, we've heard a lot of different issues going on tonight in the city. This is a proactive, preventative ordinance. It's going to prevent problems from happening. We've seen a lot of towns recently in New Jersey and Brick and uh, uh, Paramus and East Hanover, East Brunswick. They have these horrible pet stores where they're selling dogs and cats from puppy mills and kitten mills. These animals are not socialized. They have behavioral problems. Uh, a lot of these stores have predatory lending practices where you're virtually leasing a pet. It's really sickening. So luckily, Asbury Park doesn't have any current pet stores, but this is to prevent them from opening and selling cats or dogs from puppy mills. So this is something that uh, Monmouth County supports. Over 100 municipalities in New Jersey have already passed this. So without taking any more time, I want to leave this very brief, concise pet store report with the council and mayor. Um, just a review for your, your, your perusing about New Jersey's pet stores. So I thank you for this and um, encourage you to vote yes. Thank you. Thank you. Motion to close. Move it. Second. <coughs> council Member Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Ordinance 2017-26, Ordinance of the City of Asbury Park amending traffic and parking regulations, Chapter 7, Sections 11 and 16. Have a motion to open this ordinance to the public? Move it. Second. Oh, this is the traffic one. Seeing no public comment, have a motion to close, please? Move, Move it. Second. Motion to adopt, please. Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Move it. Oh, yes. <laughs> Mayor Moore. Yes. Ordinance 2017-27, vacating an unnamed alleyway measuring 15 feet located east of Dunleavy Street and Block 1801. As shown on sheet 18 of the official tax map of the city of Asbury Park, I have a motion to open this ordinance to the public, please. Move it. Second. Motion to close. Move it. Second. Rita wants to speak. vacate an unnamed alleyway which is perpendicular to Dunlowy Street. It's a 15 feet wide um, unused right-of-way. It's an unused right-of-way. Un it's not used by the city. The, uh, the, the governing body has determined there's no longer a need for, for the city to have that area. The area is being vacated. There's a there's a map that's attached to the ordinance. This alleyway is probably here 100 years. And yeah. So now you're saying it's obsolete. Nobody uses it. Is that it? The city has made a determination that um, it no longer serves any public purpose. The city does not need it. Um, it potentially is a liability to the city and they're vacating this 
city's interest in the property. So is that just one piece of property? It's a 15-foot it's a wide alleyway that only runs the, the length of the lots that are on the, I think the north side of um, the block between Dunluwe and Central Avenue. Alleyway vacation does not need to go before either the planning or zoning board. It's a, a matter that's strictly before the mayor and council. Okay, so they're getting this free? Is that it? The property will revert to um, half and half to each of the adjacent property owners. So approximately seven and a half feet will go to one property owner and seven and a half feet will go to the other property owner. Okay. And there's no money involved? There is no compensation. Jerry Scrano, Long Branch. Um, I don't know anybody who gives land away. It should be put up to bid, announcement for bid. Someone may want to buy it for their own private driveway. Why would you give land away? Even if you got $500 for it. I know it's going to go back on the tax roll, but I had a lot that was adjacent to me. I bid on it against my neighbors, the first house I bought. They should be bidding on the property, the strip. I really think it's a disgrace to give away land. Let somebody from the east side buy it so they can have the private parking for their recreational vehicle. And then I, I, it's not right to give away free land. It's city assets. If you got $500, it's still better than nothing. I'm sorry, I really disagree with you guys on this point. Thank you very much for letting me talk. Motion to close. Second. Okay, so motion. I'm gonna pray to help me here. We have a motion on the floor, so I'm gonna make a motion to the table. We have no motion on the floor. We, have we no just okay. Open. Then I'm gonna make a motion to the table. Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Yep. Motion to adjourn. Move it. Have a second. All in favor?